going to let me record this because I said it cut me off at five minutes and maybe that's YouTube. But this is part two of what I was, uh, my story with uh, surviving rape. Um, like I said, uh, this is your friendly neighborhood crustacean. Send it over to you. Um, like I said, um, I am getting therapy, um, working towards it. And, you know, I was saying in the video, if you, um, I could put lots of links in the description and a lot of YouTubers do when they tell their story about things they've gone through. But I think if you want to get help, you will outlook for it. And just a few clicks of a Google search, you go in the bathroom and look up, you ask, you know, go into your doctor's office and ask your doctor. You know, if you want help with something, you, you've got to take the initiative. Um, the reason, uh, there's two reasons why I'm telling my story now. One is because um, I think I'm ready, even though it's very painful. Um, it went on for about two years um, when I finally um, came out to my family after listening, ask, going to a uh, listen to radio program about my eating disorder. I would just sit there and eat my feelings. I would just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. And especially if the aggressor was around, I would just, it was a control thing. Is what it was. Um, so let's just call it what it is. You know. So um, then. That's what I decided, you know, I wasn't going to do that anymore. So I went, came out to my family. I told uh, somebody very close to him first. And then I came out to my parents and I came out to some other people. And, you know, there was some belief, there was some understanding, and then there was some disbelief and there was some misunderstanding. And, you know, the disbelief is what they call secondary trauma. The disbelief is what hurts more than really the belief of it in you know, the, the action so I, I am doing much better than what I have been for a very long time I haven't seen this person in almost three years um, I don't generally 